Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Linux seems to get all the buzz every time there's something big that happens within the community. Uh, Ubuntu seems to be the Linux distribution that has captured the minds and hearts of many a Linux user. In fact, many a converting Linux user. Is that me? Not necessarily. I look at it and go, oh, that's a nice. Uh, if you want to switch to it, be my guest. And in fact, we have a blogger on LockerGnome.com. This is uh, Matt, and he's been writing for a couple weeks now, hoping to get more attention. And he wrote an article on moving to Linux specifically from Windows. So if you're a Windows user and you're thinking about Linux, he's got five tips for you offhand. Number five, first off, you make sure you can live in a non-Windows world. The easiest way to figure out whether or not you can is to download a Linux distribution like Ubuntu, uh, a live CD, look for that term, and essentially you can take that file, burn it to a CD, put it in your computer, reboot that computer, and be using Linux without having to install it. And then when you're done, you can turn off the computer, take the CD out of the drive, reboot your computer again, and you're back in Windows. A live CD doesn't touch your hard drive, unless, of course, you want it to, and I wouldn't recommend that, especially for novice users. So get a good feel for it without necessarily installing it. There's also Wubi, which we've done videos on as well. Number four, limited commercial support. So learn to love your neighbors. That's the one thing that I'm really not hot on as far as Linux is concerned. I tripped on myself there. Uh, the fact that it is driven by the community, it is open source, uh, it's wide and it's varied in terms of the type of response you might get or the problems that you might have. So if you're not quite used to interacting in a non-annoying way with members of a community, uh, Linux is going to be somewhat of a challenge for you, uh, any distribution of Linux, no matter how simple it might seem to be. Number three, find the right version for you. Thousands of distributions out there. Uh, I've talked about Sabion. I think it has tons of eye candy in there. Of course, the new version of Ubuntu uh, comes with uh, Compiz Fusion pre-installed, which allows for fancy 3D effects and whatnot. That's the, the computer that uh, Wireless Packet received uh, just at a random giveaway. Uh, he got the Ubuntu computer. Uh, number two, do your homework. Google and make sure that all your hardware uh, will work within Linux from the get-go. Because if you don't have hardware support with your operating system, uh, it's going to be a very painful experience for you. And then, of course, number one, just jump in. And that's, I think, the biggest thing that impedes anybody's ability to try new things is that they don't try. That is 90% of everything. Just trying it. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Try something else. Move on. At least you tried it. Because if you don't try it and you're sitting there pretending like you know what you're talking about and you don't really know what you're talking about because you haven't even tried it, well, well, then what's the point of saying anything at all? Try. Do or do not. There is no try. Oh, wait. That was the wrong quote. Anyway, so Lord Cat, Wireless Packet, and Data Lore, what do you think? Um, like you mentioned before, I have the Ubuntu PC here. I've been using it for about two weeks, and I'm using it full-time now. I have an OS X machine and an Ubuntu machine, and I love it. It's great. Um, it, you know, I could read and write to my uh, USB uh, NTFS drives. Your Windows drives. Um, my Windows drives. Um, you know, I'm checking email. I'm, I'm going browsing the websites. Uh, you know, there's a couple games I could play in, uh, in Linux. Uh, also, if I want to, you know, boot into Windows, I've been using VMware Server Console, which is uh, uh, free to download from VMware, and uh, I have uh, Windows XP installed in there. Hmm. So if I need to use Windows on this machine, I can, and it's for I mean, it's 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 simple. Within a virtual machine. Well, now what virtual about machine. what about moving from Windows to Linux? I mean, do you have any specific? Uh, I w I would recommend if you want to dabble in the world of Linux and you're running a win you know running a Windows machine, uh, Microsoft has Virtual PC, which is available free. Uh, you know, if you have a valid copy of Windows, uh, you can install. Uh, any version of Linux you want, and just try it out in a virtual machine. Also, uh, VirtualBox will also give you that same uh, same option to just install Linux into a virtual world, uh, virtual environment. And, and I would try it that way first, um, because if you have one machine and you go to install Linux on your your Windows machine and you 
find it you don't like it, then you have to go back and reinstall everything. Hmm. Best to try it in like a virtual world uh, or use Wobi. I would recommend that too. But uh, just just yeah, I'm using um go with an I'm open mind. A... <clears throat> yeah, exactly. I'm using Kubuntu uh, under VMware Fusion on the Mac, and it just installs from the ISO a breeze. Absolute breeze, and I find in the user interface because it's KDE, it's flavored towards Windows users a little bit more than say the traditional Ubuntu, which I believe is the GNOME desktop. Um, I'm playing around with um, Linux MCE on it now at the moment, and I've just ordered more RAM for my MacBook, so it should run a bit smoother. But the installation was was abs an absolute breeze, and it's very intuitive as well. So, like, if you're coming from a Windows environment and you want something intuitive, like, I'm the kind of person that would settle in with any operating system that, that could handle the internet and email, or the, it, just the internet in general, because you can do email online. But, um, yeah, I, I, I would go with something that, that definitely would have a Windows look and feel, and, and Kubuntu has it. Yeah. Not just a preference, it, it just has it there. So, if it's available, why not, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say also when if you're gonna go to if you're thinking about switching to Linux, I mean, there's a couple things you have to understand. The, you know, installing applications is not like how it is in the Windows environment. I mean, there's different package managers, RPM, Debian. Uh, it's just it can get a little hairy at times. So <laughs> yeah, you just have to do a lot of research. See, now that's that's where I think OS 10 totally wipes the walls. I mean, yeah. you don't necessarily have to install a program. You just Drag its icon somewhere, and that's it. That that's yeah. that's yeah. all I mean, with, you need to do. With Linux, if you're if you're you're downloading an app, and it's and like for Ubuntu, let's just say, and it, and you need a Debian file for it, um, Debian package. If you can't get that application in Debian package, you have to make the file executable, and then do all sorts of things in the terminal. And that's not for a novice user. See, that's I, that's why I don't think Linux is ever going to make it on the desktop. I really don't. I think it's it's fun to talk about and it's interesting to play with and I think yeah. the future of Linux is certainly in embedded devices. Uh, but uh, as far as Chris, has Linux come a long way though. Well, no, yeah, it has. But there's way. okay. It's let's red you know what you know what over let's, the last two years it's come a long way. I agree, but it's not. Uh, you know what? Not. Apple's having a, a big enough challenge with trying to defeat uh, the juggernaut, which is Microsoft Windows. Linux is going to have even more of a challenge. If anything's gaining traction, it's it's likely Ubuntu, maybe Red Hat, maybe SUSE, maybe the projects within it, uh, but it's not going to it's not going to win. It's there's just no way. I understand. Open is the way to go. It is, but you, wireless packet. You were just talking about how installing things may not be as simple as pointing and clicking. Until it gets exactly. to that point, it's never going to take well, off. That's up to the developers, Chris. No, like, the developers no, 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 no. You know, Linux here's the thing. Easier. On APC Magazine, there was an interview with one of the guys who was hell-bent on increasing uh, the, uh, the level of efficiency in the desktop. On the desktop. He was, that's what he was all about. And he kept getting shunned by the core developers who were trying to optimize different parts of the operating system. He got system. blackballed. He got blackballed. And for better or for worse... There is nobody leading the Linux community. It's just kind of every man for himself, every man or woman, as the case may be. I mean, if they if they ever wanted to to be an operating system where the average Joe or Mary whatever can use it, it has they have to have they have to standardize package manager. Yep. Number one. One. Number two, we need better hardware support from the manufacturers. Two. Okay, and uh, those are the one to two main things I, I'm thinking of right now, but. What do you think? Anything else? Three, user interface. It has to be yeah. consistent. Yeah, you know, there's that, a big yeah. enough issue with it's people. They don't, people don't, they can't, if, they, if it's not in the same place, at the same, it's just got to be the same. And if it's not, it's not going to work. Yeah. You know, KDE, Gnome, ICE, it, you know, it's, you, and I understand the value of being open source and you can make it whatever you want to make it. But you know what? Ask your parents what they want their computer to do. Do they want their computer to be able to compile the latest version of Mozilla? N n n no. no. They they want no. it to work. Want it to work. Yeah. My father's 68 years old. He wants his Mac to work. That's it. Bingo. 
And until yeah. Linux... I mean, even the Mac OS has UI issues, Chris. Oh, yeah, of course it does. The Mac, Mac OS... Mac, I, I don't think Leopard is going to resolve that, but so does Windows, so does Vista. Vista well, I, I believe Vista has UI issues. Vista is replete XP with... Has well, more. XP and Vista are replete with UI inconsistencies for a lot of reasons. Mac OS X, from a user interface standpoint, even though there's some small variations... The menu bar is always in what location? Where's the menu bar? Top. It's at the top, no matter what application you're in. Always in the same place. Always. Period. End of story. But, if the menu is inside yeah, the application, it's that, an error in application. And you don't see a lot of those I taking find off. That very, personally, I find that very irritating. Okay, I come from. I've been using my MacBook now since January this year, right? And it's it's actually an irritating feature for me that I actually have to click in the application, which may be hidden behind a load of windows. I might have to do an F11 and squeeze around and try and find them, or and, and then just to bring up the menu bar at the top. I just want to click in the application and not have to drag my mouse up to the top of the window to click on it. So, that's my personal. So you don't you don't do a lot of keyboard shortcuts, do you? Because that's another thing uh, the Mac well, has done really well with. Uh, no, I do. Uh, no, I do, but I tend to use the menu uh, See, a little bit more than I would with keyboard shortcuts. If, if I use... Like, I've been working in computers now for, what, uh, 12 years, 13 years? I, I worked it with System 7. And, uh, to be honest, System 7 and 7.5, I liked it, okay? Uh, OS 9, I liked it. Actually, I thought OS 9 had better... Uh, had a better user interface. So, than so, so let me ask you this then: that Why is Microsoft trying to get rid of menus? Why? Because they are. Mistake that they are. Why are they trying to get rid yeah, of I menus? I know. There's, there's a reason. Be because they. Yeah, there's because a reason. They want to make if the app, for, right? Yeah, they want to. If, look, all the applications that are coming out now, Chris. Right? That that people are designing Windows for Windows Four. They're they're copying the whole Office look and feel. Right? Office two thousand three going back, all right? You look at OpenOffice, you look at all these other applications, it's the same. Microsoft wants to bring out a product that is a little bit different and, and gets people to think, yeah, you should actually buy this product because the way we do things is different now and you should learn because the way we're offering it to you is better than the way it's been done for since Office, what was it, 4.3 on Windows 3.1? You know, it's the same, you go back to so, Word 2. Right. Obviously, we're talking so about differences between Windows and the Mac. How do you think people are going to deal with Linux? Even if the menuing systems were exactly the same, I, how do you I would think... Never, I, yeah, I would never recommend Linux for someone that's just... That, that is stuck in a Windows world and never ever used it. I would never recommend it. I would never recommend it to a family member, to a friend, because I, I just... I just wouldn't. I, like I, don't, don't want, I don't want to put them through that misery. Well, now that's that, and we're not saying obviously that Linux is misery, not by any stretch of the imagination. But at this point, I want to turn to the community and ask what you guys think. I mean, not just about user interface discrepancies in any operating system, but specifically about moving from Windows to Linux. Have you done it? Or this is a deeper question: Have you recommended that other people do it, and why? What What would give you the foresight to see things that maybe I'm not? necessarily seeing because everything that I'm perceiving in this galaxy of Linux users is that it's a hell of a lot more complicated than uh, some geeks might make it out to be. So if you've got your parents or siblings or friends running on Linux without any kind of issue, tell me what they're doing on a regular basis that they can do this and are you doing things for them or are you just giving them a CD off the shelf or burning it from the internet and handing it to them and saying hey good luck with that and if you need any help call me because that's not something I'm interested in doing tech support even on a limited basis can be somewhat frustrating with friends and family members just just a little sometimes I like doing it it just depends on the day what do you think? Have you done it? Are you making the leap? Uh, do you have any tips for moving from Windows to Linux? Or do you have any uh, ideas about how Linux may possibly overtake Windows and or OS X? I don't see it happening. I mean, I realize it would be the cool thing to say. I, I just, I, I don't see it. I just don't see it happening. It's just not, I don't think it's going to happen. Not for a long time. Certainly not in my lifetime. But what do you think? Email me, chris at perillo.com. I'm not trying to be negative. Just trying to be realistic, and believe me, there is a difference. 
so uh, you can also leave a comment, follow up, remark, and then uh, you can uh, swing by the chat room. Uh, people are usually talking about operating systems, their operating systems of choice, Ubuntu. Uh, someone mentions, like I said, that's kind of got the, the lion's share of, of the minds and hearts of the community. I don't know. Still looking for what you think. The chat room, 20, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we're always here for you, and even if I'm not, other people are. And as long as you are a polite person, because you, you got to be nice, then you know we will welcome you with open arms at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.